right, welcome back to the Sandbox. Thanks for coming by to play with me today. We're going to continue here with Signed and Sealed with a Kiss. We've just unboxed our beta boyfriend. We've named him Roy. And um, I have to leave for work. And have kicked him out of the house and told him to go back to wherever he, wherever Rainworks is, the company that apparently made him, or grew him, or whatever. And uh, I'm expecting this will be the end of the game. Uh, pretty short and sweet. So we'll see what happens. The boss isn't happy with me. Not only am I two minutes late, that seems harsh, but I also left the USB with my presentation slides on the kitchen counter at home. Great. The whole meeting is wasted because I'm the only adult who keeps my files confidential and doesn't save them to the cloud like some Silicon Valley airhead. I pay for my mistake with overtime and a public reprimand from the boss. The bottom line is... This isn't a good day at the office. Now that I'm home, I can at least pull all of that crap, put all of that crap behind me. As I drive up the street, a figure waves at me from the porch. Wait a minute. It takes a moment for the stress from this morning to come flooding back. He's still here. I get out of my car and quickly shuffle the man back inside my house. We don't exchange a single word. Are you all right? Do you need a drink or something to eat? Well, I could use a glass of water if you don't mind. I nod, walking to the kitchen to fetch the man a beverage. I seem... So, sometimes in this game, there are, there are things that feel just a little off. So this morning, I'm like, okay, this guy is just some employee of Rainworks. This is like a prank. I don't understand this. Get out of my house. <laughs> and I come back, and suddenly he's like my best friend. Can I help you? Do you need anything? Do you need a back rub or some food or water? Uh, when I hand it to him, he downs the thing. And uh, look, I just think I'm not a I'm not against being nice to the guy. He is cute and he seems harmless, but uh, it should be consistent is, is what I'm saying. When I down, hand it to him, he downs the thing like it's the most delicious thing that's ever touched his taste buds. So what are you still doing here? <sighs> I couldn't decide where to go, and then you showed up. I've been gone for eight hours. I was thinking for eight hours. It only felt like seven. You know, it's not normal to sit outside someone's house for eight hours, you know? You could have been arrested. You mean by the police? Oh, I did speak to them. They said I should keep my spare key somewhere. That way I won't lock myself out and have to wait for you to get home. Y you spoke to them and they just believed you? Believe me, I didn't lie. I told them I was your boyfriend, and then they gave me that advice. Well, at least someone believes I'm capable of scoring myself a boyfriend, I guess. I can't help but worry that the police are a bit too lax, though. I did find your spare key, though. It was under the naked garden gnome. Roy hands me the spare key, looking very pleased with himself. If you had the key, why did you sit on the porch all day? Because you kicked me out. Oh, that's harsh. Man. I want you to trust me. You can't do that if I break into your house. Oh, okay. Little heartstring tug there. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Don't you have to go back to your workplace, Rainworks, or whatever they're called? I tried to tell you this before, but they aren't my employer. Huh, then who hired you to chill naked in that box? Okay, so now I'm back to thinking he's a weirdo in a box. I... The game just seems, it feels inconsistent sometimes. No one. I'm not a stripper, and this isn't a prank. Oh, seriously? Seriously. Okay. Oh? Huh? You can stay. You can stay. Wait, he didn't ask. What? <laughs> okay, another non sequitur that seemed to drop out of the thin, thin air. I, I'm not, okay. We're talking about him staying in my house now. Okay, you can stay. That's amazing. Really? Don't worry. I'll be everything you want me to be and become the best boyfriend you've ever had. The man parts his arms and comes in for a hug. I wrap my arms around him in kind, committing uh, the warm touch to memory. When was the last time I got to hug somebody? This is so nice. But there's still one problem. I pull away from Roy and take a deep sigh. His expression instantly turns into one of confusion. First, this isn't a thing, okay? I'm not your boyfriend, and you're not mine. You got that? Yet. 
Well, that's kind of cocky. <laughs> Roy smiles at me with a new kind of cockiness to his expression. Okay, I'm not in the mood for bad jokes, jokes okay? Sorry, I just had a rough day at work, okay? Oh, I'm sorry. It's fine. I'm not going to rag on you when I realize you've... You must have had it tough, too, standing outside this whole time. Now, rule two, I'm not rich, and this isn't a meal ticket. I'm going to believe what you said earlier, so you're going to look for a job tomorrow, understand? Crystal, what's the last thing? I've actually only thought of two things, but I suppose the best thing I suppose the best things come in threes. I look around and my eyes fall onto the couch. Um, you sleep there. You can use any of the necessities, but please don't use anything too personal, okay? Also, don't come into my bedroom. Yet, I exchange smirks with the man. Give it a few days at least, Casanova. We'll see about that. Well, this guy is sly. But, I meant what I said. If this is what you want, then I'll do it. No problem. I'm here to be who you want me to be. I get it. Look, I'm going to make that, that into a rule, too. I don't want you to be whoever I choose. I want you to be whoever you want, okay? Which is a nice sentiment, but actually that's not how the game mechanics work. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's a little disingenuous. But anyway, like I said, the game's not perfect, but it's nice. Whoever I want? Yeah, so, you know, get a hobby or something. Do things for yourself. Oh? Well, that sounds fun, I guess. From the look on his face, it doesn't seem like that's what Roy honestly feels, but it's a start. Plus, I have no more time to argue over this. I have some serious ass-kicking to do tomorrow morning, which means I need a long bath and a good night's rest. Okay, great. I will talk to you in the morning, then. Good night, Roy. <laughs> good night, and thank you. And I wake up to feeling uh, peppy and hopeful, but the dreams I had last night kept me up, and even now, they haunt me. One of them was pretty awesome. I was a cowboy, and my high school sweetheart was there. I jumped down from a horse, and he looked at me with his sexy emerald green eyes and mischievous twinkle in them. He pulled me close and said, I'd giddy up on y'all, with a full southern draw and a smirk that said he meant it. I died. No, literally. Moments later, a wild horse stampeded me dead like my name was Mufasa. Long story short, I came, I died, and then I woke up. And that was just a good dream. When I went back to sleep, things just got weirder. There was a naked man in a box, and a strange courier. Then there was something about an evil corporation that was stealing the hearts of youths using the power of Olven, whatever the heck that was. It was pretty freaky stuff. But it was only a dream. I have better things to worry about than evil, love-obsessed people, like taxes and evil government regimes and coffee. Normal stuff. Okay, evil government regimes, again, kind of gives you a hint to what our occupation probably is. So, license to kill evil government regimes, right? As I sit up, I get a strong whiff of something that I assume is coming from myself. I take a quick sniff of my nightshirt, but the smell is absolutely awful. I can, bear I can barely stand to be around it, and it's my own stank. I take off the shirt and leave it behind. Nothing says single living like walking around your home in your birthday suit, after all. That's one of the great pleasures of life, being able to walk around your own home naked. The moment I enter the living room, a strong scent of coffee hits me. Not the cheap store brand stuff I usually buy, but real roasted coffee. What kind of person breaks into your house and makes you coffee? Good to see you. Good morning, says Roy. A mail order boyfriend, that's who. Somehow my dream came true. The box, the courier, the oppressive dystopian dictatorship, they're all real. I made you. The man stares at me and I stare back. Neither of us can believe, our, uh, believe their eyes. Finally, I realize that his eyes aren't on me, but my... I look down slowly, feeling the cold air on my naked skin and Roy's eyes on my shit. I duck and cover. I do everything but roll as I grab the nearest object. Okay, duck, cover, roll. You're getting the idea here of what uh, our occupation probably is. Sadly, it's just a square dishcloth, which doesn't hide very much. Hi, so you're still here, huh? <laughs> yeah, I thought 
I'd make you some coffee. S surprise You mind turning around and covering your eyes? Oh, okay, okay. When I'm certain the man can't see me anymore, I put the dishcloth back on the counter. So, you are real. I'm sorry. S sorry, I didn't see much, honestly. Oh, right. Ah, uh, thanks. He's totally just saying that. He saw everything. I begin to walk back upstairs. My foot only hits the first step when Roy calls after me. Can I turn around now? Yeah, go for it. I climb a few more steps and a loud crash comes from downstairs. Uh, you can uncover your eyes too. Oh, thanks. With that, I continue upstairs to get ready for another day of work. I run down the stairs without a moment to lose. It'll be tight, but if I can take the freeway, I might be able to get to work on time. That whole fiasco this morning set me back. Brian? I'm running out of time, but he does seem nice. Yeah, what is it? Where are you going? I thought we could have breakfast together. Uh, I have to go to work, Roy. If I don't leave now, I'm going to be late. I'm sorry, can we continue this later? Okay, then let's talk at dinner. Sure, sure. My life's in your hands. And don't worry, I'll stick to the rules from now on, even while you're gone. Uh oh Get a job, get a life, and we aren't a thing, right? Well, when you put it like that, that sounds kind of harsh. Right, those. Pretty sure I didn't say get a life, though. See ya. My bad. Either way, have a nice day. Thanks. I'll, I'll see you later. I dash out the door. I know I must be crazy leaving a stranger in my house like this, but there's something about the man that seems so safe and innocent. I can't just leave him alone. Besides, what's the worst thing that can happen? We may find out. As much as I want to trust Roy, I can't help but feel a little anxious. I should call him just to check on things. I dial the house's landline, and there's no answer. I call again, and... still nothing. He's okay, right? I mean, he hasn't accidentally set the house on fire, has he? I have to go home. I sneak out of, the, out of work and drive home, hoping I'm only being paranoid, but also hoping that I'm not, so that this ride isn't for nothing. Roy? The sound of footsteps stomping down the stairs instantly makes me makes my heavy heart feel 100% better. Good to see you. Hi. Hi. I was just, um, I don't want to accidentally come off too strong and give him the wrong idea, so... Yes? It's my break, and so I have a few moments to check in on things, and I wanted to see... To see? This might be a bad idea, but how you're holding up, you know, adjusting to your new home. Oh. Choices. Were you lonely? Are you staying out of trouble? Are you feeling well? So these choices will impact his personality. So for example, if you pick, are you staying out of trouble? He gets kind of an attitude. <laughs> um, yeah, he gets a little yeah, he gets a little mouthy. Um, were you lonely? Again, affects his his behavior, his demeanor, um, and it also affects the the jobs that you get to select from, which is coming up in a few panels here. So um, I'm gonna go with uh, were you were you lonely? You lonely, buddy? Were you lonely while I was gone? Yeah, a little. Oh, I'm sorry. No, don't be. It's not your fault. This isn't what I was told it would be. What did they tell you? Well, no one told me anything, I guess. Roy has a strange expression that verges on constipated as he tries to force the memory out. I don't know. I might have been told something, or maybe not. I can't remember. All I know is how I feel. When you activated me, I knew I wanted to live for you and make you happy. It was kind of like love at first sight. Okay, so again, we know this is a fantasy game, right? Because this isn't how it works in real life. Um, no one wants to live just for you and live only to make you happy. And they come with no baggage and no history and, uh, you know, no nothing. They're just blank slates and you can make them into whatever you want them to be. Total fantasy. Um, okay, but, you know, let's go with it. It's, you know, as long as we understand. You know, I'm not so sure about that one. I mean, this is 
I mean this in the nicest way possible, but you don't know me. You were basically born yesterday, after all. <laughs> you mean born sexy yesterday? Ha, huh, yeah, that's, that's funny. I am pretty good looking, though. You have to admit it. Yes, yes you are. I mean, anyone who says otherwise is lying. Oh, thanks. Did he really just fish for a compliment and then get bashful over it? My god, that's adorable. At least you don't look upset now. Yeah, I feel a lot better. And, well, it's not been all bad. This little roller coaster love affair of ours. I did get to see a new side of you this morning. Huh, very funny. Uh, that's one way to put it. You're too cute. Sorry, I can't help it. You do have a cute butt, though. Anyway, um, how's the job hunt going? I, I didn't even get to ask yet. Oh, I completely forgot. I've been hired somewhere already, actually. I was up all night job hunting, and I started work this morning. Okay, so again, we know this is fantasy because that doesn't happen. I wanted to surprise you, so surprise. Really? So here's our, uh, here's our options. Uh, a teaching assistant, a model, or a stripper. And again, these jobs will kind of affect his personality. Um, so what do we want to go with here? We want to go with, um, you know, intelligence is sexy. Let's go with, uh, I mean, Stripper is physically sexy, but let's be honest. Um, and Model is kind of the same thing. I know too many models who are stuck on themselves. So we're going to go with Teaching Assistant. Really? I had two classes this morning on a trial shift, and my students were interested in what I had to say. And a few of them even asked me about private tutoring. Uh, I'm not so sure about that one, Roy. Oh? Huh? Why not? Because they're minors, and there's no way they were impressed by your teaching skills on day one. They just have crushes on you. Besides, you might lose your job if you show too much favoritism. Oh no, they're college students. Totally consensual and full of potential. Isn't that funny? One of them said, one of them said that to me. I think I like her the best. She's super cute as well. Oh, Roy. That sounds like a lawsuit waiting to happen, buddy. Uh, what you want from each other is probably a little different. Are you jealous? Uh, jealousy has nothing to do with it. I'm concerned that you're going to get fired, or worse, if you aren't careful. You don't have to worry about that. I'm actually a pretty good TA. Besides, my students may be cute, but none of them own my body. That's reserved only for you to use and abuse. Okay, that's a little... <clears throat> putting himself out there as someone that I can abuse, saying that only I own his body, that's, you know, I'm not sure morally <laughs> that's the best way to go, but okay. Ah, right. Oh, that's my work. I should answer this. Ah, don't mind me. I gotta get going back to work anyway. See ya. I'll see you later. On the drive back to work, I'm still trying to wrap my head around whatever my life has become. On paper, it doesn't seem too weird. I received a boyfriend in the mail, and he's found a job faster than any millennial undergrad ever could. You know, life isn't awful. So why do I have a terrible feeling about all of this? Dun dun dun! <laughs> With that foreshadowing, maybe we'll cut the episode right here and uh, come back in the next episode to see how our life with Roy begins to pan out. We'll see you next time here in the Sandbox.